Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. Today we're going to be doing another video kind of about the self-publishing process, similar to my last one which was a beginner's guide. This is going to be more of a, I guess, an intermediate guide. Last time it was completely free, completely do-it-yourself, literally as affordable and easy for anyone as possible. But this time, this is going to have a slight budget, a slight more expertise. You can still probably do it entirely yourself, as I did, but we're going to go through the entire process again in some detail. This video is slightly more fun, so we're not talking about one of my books for once, we're talking about the book March and Feather by my beloved friend Emma Saska, which is her debut novel coming out in February 2023, and I had the honour of doing the cover design, the interior design, and just handling the self-publishing process for her, and publishing it under my company, Little Lakes Independent Publishing. This book was also fun because I've made a version of it before, probably over a year ago now, Emma sent me a PDF version of the book, and I said, nah, I don't read PDFs. So I spent my weekend making it into a physical book of like a very simple cover, very simple interior formatting, just to have. And I think me making that PDF into a book just for fun and because I refuse to read a PDF may have triggered or kickstarted the actual self-publishing process. Because as soon as you see your book in actual book shape, things start to change. So the brief of this book was basically do whatever I want, full creative control, which was so exciting for me. And I had a rough idea of what I wanted to do and what Emma likes as we had done that cover and the interior in the past. The original cover was very green, like sagey green, very pastel pink, very flowery. It had silhouettes of the characters rather than actual detailed characters, which I personally chose to do at the time because minimal artistic experience. And also the characters throughout most of the book are anonymous online internet friends. So I thought having like no features to the character, no distinguishable appearance, kind of added to the anonymity and that was fun for me. But it was very flowery. The flowers and the colour scheme for the book were literally picked straight out of a letter Emma sent me. And I thought that was like a fun little cute connection just for us, because no one's going to know that. The interior at the time was also very fun, because this book has a lot of their online friends. There's a lot of online components. There's a lot of texts, emails, there's forum at some point. There's a blog also at some point. So it's fun for me to go around and experiment with how I can do this. Like, do I need to change fonts for this? Is there some specific alignment things? I can very clearly tell that this is the text without having to like draw a speech bubble, all those kind of things. So with this past knowledge in mind, I made myself a fun little mood board and I got to work. As I do with my own publishing experience, I started off with the cover. I drew up some fun little designs. At the time, I think I had, we hadn't quite decided it was gonna be paperback or hardcover. So I go into anything expecting it to be a hardcover because that's what I'm like as a person. I'm pulling up my iPad, you know it's getting serious now. So the first very rough sketch I pulled up were the two main characters, March and Feather, their online names, kind of sat in a coffee shop kind of scene. That was the front cover. The back cover had just like a carry-on of the scene where the table's at the back and a nice big space at the front for I don't know, other author quotes, maybe the description, whatever was going on there. And then for the inside flap where the actual book description is, I, put, I was going to put these little speech bubbles with flowers because that was very reminiscent of the original cover I made with the back cover. It was it was speech bubbles. It was very cute, actually. But looking at this, I thought I have a very complicated relationship with illustrated covers and illustrated characters on the cover. I personally like to leave characters up to the imagination. And as someone who does not imagine characters at all most of the time, being forced to, what, to know what they look like, not a fan of that. And also at this time, my artistic ability, as you may be able to tell from this sketch, was very limited. So I did not want to commit and submit this sketch to Emma and be like, hey, I'm going to make this and then not be able to carry it out at all. Another cover I made during this like very rough sketch process when it's still could have been a hardback, again had the speech bubbles on the inner, in the inner flap. And I went back to more of the design of the original cover I made. I went back to having the people as silhouettes. So it was very, again, minimalist color scheme of sagey green, pinky, white. I had some yellow in there to tie into the flowers and also Emma's author photo has her wearing a yellow top, I think. And that's nice to tie in. It has this fun, paler pink swirly line to show the headphones because a lot of the conversations these characters have are bonding over music. So I wanted to tie that in there as well. And again, that is a large part of how mine and Emma's relationship came to be was music. On the back, we had like a bigger silhouette of just Feather's character, which I thought at this point, this was looking too overly romancy. The romance in this book is very slow burn. There's no, there's no kiss or anything till like pretty much the final chapter. It's more of an emphasis on their friendship and that aspect of the relationship. 
So I thought her holding a flower on the back was like very too much romancy, so I scrapped that idea. I then stopped thinking of the cover as a full spread and just focus on literally just the front cover itself because I was getting too carried away with other ideas. And this is where I made for midnight. I thought, you know, this could work. Again, it was silhouettes of the characters with this fun swirly headphone line. We had flowers in the background. And I thought, we're gonna go simple. This book is set in Virginia, which, um, Richmond, Virginia, which I guess is a city. But the writing style itself and the plot itself has like, almost like a very cozy, warm, intimate, what I interpret as a small town vibe. Even if the book's not set in a small town, it has like that softness and that warmth to it. So I thought, you know, we're just gonna have like a little, almost a skyline in the background or just some houses. It's going to be very minimalistic, very simple, so I thought, you know, I can actually manage to do this. Also, I learned how to use Procreate specifically for this job. So this, again, most of it is so rough around the edges because this is my first time using Procreate. But this is the cover design I made where I thought, you know, I can work with this and this could look good. I also mocked up a very similar one in the same colour scheme, but it was the characters walking more into the distance. And as much as I like that, and again, the simplicity of it, I was very emotionally attached to the swirly headphone line at this point. And I thought, you know, they're kind of, I wanted the silhouettes to be two different colors for this one, just so you can clearly see they're two different people, so they're not just one blobby mass. But I thought, you know, introducing too many colors, which would be funny because we're gonna get to that in a bit. So I settled on that idea of them silhouetted, you know, holding hands, headphones on, town skyline in the background. Um, then we went back to actually making the full cover spread. This was just a rough one because at this point I didn't have the interior done or the full like estimated page count done. At this point when I was still doing these little cover mock-ups Emma was still working on final edits for the book so I was just like entertaining myself in the meantime. So this version of the cover very again very very simple so I just wanted to at this point roughly putting things in place, the size, the scale of them, we haven't settled on fonts yet. This was literally just put everything in the right place and see how it goes. So I knew the people were gonna be quite big. I knew the town had to wrap around to the back cover as well and leave enough sky space at the top for the book description. And that was again, very, very simple colors as well. I found a color palette that was very similar to the original color palette that I made like a year or two ago. So I just stole those colors, put it in here just so I could also start blocking out the colors like how much this is going to be green, how much this is going to be pink, how much it's going to be yellow. So I can start planning ahead because I wanted to do minimal colours as possible so it wasn't bright, vibrant, busy. Because I think too many colours at that point can start moving the book down to more middle grade territory based with the aesthetic. And this is a YA. So it's had, it's had a little bit of colour. Just excessive colour I think can like shift the age a bit. So after I put things roughly into place we started adding more detail. We had some smoke coming out of the chimneys, we had some rough clouds in the sky and I knew in the foreground I wanted some flowery leafy idea again to tie back into the original cover I made. So here I just started blocking out the shape of it. I wanted to be higher on the spine, lower in the middle and higher at the edges again. Again I think I started messing around with text spacing as well here but we hadn't quite settled on fonts. And at this point I knew I definitely wanted the barcode to have like a little pink box around it because I knew the background there would be very busy so I kind of wanted to isolate it, frame it, almost. This third design is where things started to finally click properly for me. Mostly because I changed the font from Amatic I believe to Adorned con Condensed, which is a font I'm obsessed with. I've been waiting to use for one of my own YA contemporaries for so long but I just hadn't written the book yet so it, I used it for this one. Here I also knew I wanted to add some trees behind the houses to add more layers and more depth and again to have this like cozy, warm, intimate town vibe. The sky has a gradient, it has some clouds that are more faded out, which I think in the end I ended up removing the clouds entirely because I think it was adding too much detail in the sky. And what we ended up doing with the text changed things a bit. There's clouds there, there's more, um, there's more trees in the background. I decided that I was going to add like a nice little Gaussian blur to the background to again create a sense of depth and so the focus is fully on these people. I add a little flower to the end of the headphone wire going into March's pocket so it doesn't just end ominously. I added the swirly lines across the text itself and had a little heart on the spine for extra decoration. Again to represent the swirly headphone wire and because I think it was fun it filled in the space nicely and went around and framed the image nicely. 
I also started experimenting more with the leaves in the foreground and the flowers and again the colours I wanted, the shapes I wanted. But at this point I still haven't quite learned how to draw and procreate yet. I would say the process for this entire cover was maybe, I would say six weeks max. So I think I started working on it six weeks ago, like I mid-October time, it's now early December. So the entire cover was done that time, the entire interior was done that time, proof copies were done that time. It was, it, I did have the time for a longer turnaround, just when I get um, interested in a project, I will sit there and work on it till it's done, and this project scratched my brain very good. The next version of the cover feels like a step in reverse, because I was trying to do too much. I added too many colours to the sky because I wanted it to start off as like a sunrise on one end and a sunset on the other and that was just too busy because introducing that purple out of nowhere did not work. I took away the swirly line because I hadn't committed to it yet. I changed the foreground because I thought, you know, maybe it's too busy to cut like having big flowers, little flowers, big flowers, little flowers, big flowers. So I went for like an even grass all the way across. But then I thought there's just too much green happening here. The purple doesn't look right, The everything just felt a little bit wrong. But we had narrowed down on the text, pretty much the back text placement, all the other text placements was pretty much okay, it was all good. And then there's a very big jump between that version of the cover to the vinyl version of the cover. I made all the adjustments between those two versions in maybe like a two or three day span. And I worked on it pretty solidly for those two or three days because again that was scratching my brain right. We went back just to the pink to the orange for the sky. I added the swirly line back in for the text. Also I decided to hand letter the text which is the idea I had from the start. But I hadn't quite worked out what like literally what shape letters I want. I had to spend a lot of time going through and finding a good base font just to inspire me pretty much. And I chose kind of like a chalky calligraphy brush that I found in Procreate. And I was so happy with how this text turned out. At this point I also went through and refined the silhouettes, like March's hair, I think around Audra's um, feather, whose real name is Audra, around her waistline, so it wasn't just smooth as like, oh she's actually wearing a t-shirt, so those kind of things. I think it was pretty much the text of the title, or, oh, the big thing obviously is the flowers. I kept the flowers simple again, just with the pink, the yellowy orange and the greens. And I'm so happy with how the flowers turned out. Cause I, I'm not a, I'm not a digital artist or a regular artist, but I, everything looks so good when you put a lovely blur filter on it. But again, I'm so happy with how the title text turned out and the swirly line, and I'm so proud of this. Everything else also wonderful, but basically that brush choice. And if you watch the time lapse of when I was doing the text on this, you can just watch me erase and add and just redo that A. I think it was the A in feather just over and over again because it was never quite perfect. But yeah, I think that's pretty much the entire cover making process for this book. Again, it took, it was work across maybe six weeks, but that was from literally the initial idea to the final product. I think my Procreate file says I spent in between 18 and 19 hours on this, just on the illustrated parts, but I spent a lot of time in Photoshop doing the other text and I exported each appropriate layer so I could rearrange it in Photoshop and line it up perfectly to the template I made based off the book Spine Width. So that's another few hours. So, so I spent 20, 21 hours in total on this. If I got paid UK minimum wage for my age group, that cover would have cost about £200 for you to commission someone to make. While we're here and why we're talking about the financial side of the book, that is based purely off the time I put into it. That's not adding extra money for, you know, cost of tools, equipment, skill set, and any kind of knowledge. That is literally just labour time. Also, I'm happy, we'll just, I'm not going to tell you exactly how much I will get paid for all of these items, because that is my business. But also you have to bear in mind, I am friends with the author, I'm craving portfolio work right now. And the only one actual cost that I put in myself to this was when I had to bulk buy ISBNs for my own personal things, which I think was £170 for 10, so £17 per ISBN, where if you buy them individually it costs like £140 per ISBN. 
So that, that is the one cost the author will be paying because that is the one cost I specifically had to put into it, which would be £34. So that would be a paperback ISBN and an ebook ISBN. I'm just letting you know that based off minimum wage, if you hired someone who was not me, who was professional, that is on the lower end of the spectrum of what you could expect to pay for some work like that. And now we're going to talk about the insides of the book. For, for the interior, I had a pretty much solid idea of what I wanted to do already because I had done this in the past. I knew that for each text, you know, each person goes on a different side of the page. And I knew that I just wanted to change the font of the person's name who sent in the text to match one of the ones used on the cover. Because to me, that was a very clear enough distinction of what was going on. For emails, the author originally just put the text in italics, which I left for a few versions of the interior. But eventually I got to the point where I thought, you know, reading these massive chunks of text that are purely in italics, it's a little hard on the eye. I know at least for me it is. So I ended up changing it to just regular non-italics, but I changed the font to a sans serif font. So it was very clearly different and it's very clearly a sans serif font. It looks like, it looks like the font emails send in. So it made sense to me. I got a proof copy of the book here. Please ignore us while I look through and see what else there is to talk about. Here we have a forum page. I will pull it up here so you can see clearly what I'm looking at. But again, the messages are in italics and the titles of who is sending it to who is in bold italics. And I think, can I find the blog post? This is all in regular, but it very clearly has like a blog title, a post title, the date posted and comments on it. So you can very clearly say, or very clearly see what this is without me explicitly saying, oh, this is a blog post. It makes sense. I think I did a very good job of making those things clear. In terms of other interior formatting, it's, it's just very simple. What you do for any book, you know, you get the chapter title to match a font that's used on the cover. The font that the actual book is typeset in is Palatino Linotype, which is one of my favourite serif fonts, because obviously I have a favourite serif font that I love. It's in 11.5 point, which I thought looked a little big in places, but I think it's okay. It's still something I have doubts about, but I think if you make it size 11, it's too small, and size 12, it's definitely too big. And also while I'm here, we have this little leaf design that incorporates the leaf designs that are on the cover, just to separate some seams. And also we have the page numbers down here and the author title and book title are in the same font as on the cover. And there's not really a huge amount to say on the formatting, except I will say that I've made all my previous books in Microsoft Word because it's all I needed to do. And for this one, I thought, you know, I'm a professional now. I'm going to, I, I learned how to use InDesign just for this. I already had InDesign because I have a Creative Cloud subscription but I borrowed a template someone else made just so I could work it out for myself and then it became this book. But yeah, I learned how to use Procreate and InDesign just for this. Also, the first page we had the little, the little text design I made on the cover. Let's show you a little bit more. Again, we have this. The final copy of the book will have duplex printing, so there will be designs inside the front cover, which will be a greeny, it will be basically the flower design with a green background. So in the front cover, I would like to put some texts that represent the first messages that March have ever sent to each other. And on the back cover is where I would like to put the author bio rather than, let's see what's in there. Yeah, the about the author, because I don't, I don't like black and white author photos. So I'm gonna put it on the back in full color again with the green background the flowers across. And because Emma's wearing a yellow top that matches these shades of yellow in the photo is, is gonna look so good. But again, I can't show you that because I'm publishing this book through Ingram Spark because I love their distribution, love their website, love. It's pretty much the same as any other self-publishing website. It just feels a lot more professional and I know it's gonna have excellent distribution options. But they don't let you order proof copies of the book like before you submit it, which is annoying. So I had to order this proof copy from Amazon KDP because they are one of the few companies that allows you to use this specific trim size, which is 5.5 by 8.25 inches, which is a US size, I believe. I know the UK standard is 5.06 by 7.81 inches, because all my books are. But this is this is a weird, a weird trim size. But yeah, Amazon was the only one that allowed proof copies of this trim size, so it's got this lovely not for resale thing. 
It's terrible quality in true Amazon proof copy fashion. The colours are very desaturated, which I'm going to have to print like many, many like test proof versions just off my printer of this cover just to confirm because on my screen it's very saturated. On all my devices it's very saturated. On here it's very faded. Like here, while we're here, let's just have a nice little look. Thank you. We have the simplified version of the Little Lux Independent Publishing logo, which I made just for this. And then we have it on the back. It's very, <laughs> it's very like faded away, so it's such a thin logo. So I'm gonna have to thicken it up just so I can promote it. So the interior of this book took me maybe 10 hours total. I could do each version because I made a version of the interior. I sent it back to Emma who would go through and like pick out any mistakes, errors, any little things she wanted to change just in general and sent it back to me. And then I'll spend another two hours doing each version. And so it maybe took 10 hours total, which would be 95 pounds UK minimum wage. We'll round it up to a hundred pounds. So in total for a book, that's professional standard, but low end experience, low end cost, all those things. You could expect to pay around 300 pounds. But that also bears in mind that I have no defined working hours. I do things as fast as possible because it makes my brain go brr. All those good things. So if you are choosing not to do the completely free do it yourself option and you want someone to help you out in the 300 pounds, let's say the 250 to 500 pound region is what you can expect for this. And that's before you level up to full paying professional cover designers that cost hundreds of pounds, paying professional interior designers, all those things, because that's a lot more expensive. This, in my opinion, is more of the intermediate range, which again, I'd recommend if you don't have the skill set to do it yourself all the time, because it's very time consuming and it is vaguely affordable. And it also depends on how many books you are expected to sell, how much profit you, men you are expecting to gain back, all those kinds of things. So yeah, that's all I have to say about the actual bookmaking process. I'm expecting one more approved copy of the book to arrive, just so I can check on some little interior changes and cover changes. There's the ebook, which the cover's already been made. The cover is the exact same as this cover, just without this text at the top, which is an author's quote, because that would be far too small to read on a phone screen or any other device screen. And then this title was moved up to fill in the gap. And then the ebook interior looks pretty much the same as <laughs> as that. There's no like special thing I did for the ebook interior. It's the same as all my other book processes. Because again, with um, ebook interiors, you can't really have fun with fonts because it messes with device compatibility. You can't really have fun with images. So it's very simple of just make text bold, make text italic. That's basically it. So ebooks tend to have a lot less personality than physical books. To the point where I don't feel the need to speak on it in this video. But now I'm expecting more proof copies to come and I hope I can end this video by me going to my local lovely indie bookstore to pick up a copy of the book. I'll see you then. Good morning. We're not ending this video in the place where I planned because it's now like a week, maybe a few days before release day and I have somehow managed to get a finished copy now. So I will still be having my original plan of going to my local bookstore to pick up my copy but for now, I'm going to show you here, mostly so this video can actually be up on release day. So since the proof copy that I showed, pretty much everything is the exact same. Um, this is obviously a final copy. There's, it's in the dimensions of the final copy, which I think was something like 5.5 by 8.25 inches, something like that, I believe. But for that, the interior is pretty much the same. All the bleed and Martin stuff has been fixed. And the main big thing that's changed from here is the duplex printing, which means on the inside of the cover, I'll show you here, we have this fun little quote from the character's first conversation. Very cute. And then I had the plan, the main reason why I wanted to do this, which was the full colour author page because her top matches to yellow flowers. And I thought that was so cute. And I love that. Every time I look at this, I'm just in awe because I know I didn't write this book, but I, I made this. And I'm like, wow, I'm so proud that I made something with my own two hands. So to wrap up this video for this book, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about it. I'll give you my review and it'll be out in the world for your reading pleasure. So March and Feather is Emma Saska's heartfelt debut novel described as a YA you've got mail. To me, it feels like a love letter to your hometown and to your favourite songs wrapped up in diaristic prose that makes every word in this book feel cosy and familiar, like my old favourite jumper. And I mean that in the most complimentary way possible. 
The seagulls are going at it today. I don't know if you can hear, but they are vocal. I can't just keep talking over seagulls. That is not very professional of me. I'm going to wait it out. There are baking descriptions I want to take a bite from and an exploration of homeschool life that I found both honest and enlightening. Emma depicts massively the experience of heartwarming online friendships and friends to enemies to friends to lovers relationships and how to navigate your way through adolescence when the path is always changing. Being trusted to design the cover and the interior of this book was an honour and I'm so proud of Emma now that it exists off my screen and in my hands. I hope that my contributions have done the story justice. And I think that very nicely wraps up the conclusion to the saga that was this book in my life. I hope that now that it's out in the world, some of you will get your hands on it and take a read to support me in my endeavours. <laughs> Which is very bad of saying, no, support my friends and by supporting them, you support me. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope next time I do a book making video, it'll be about my book and it will be about a very special edition. And that's all I can say on that for now. Thank you so much for this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.